Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a thrilling journey through the dusty lands of Arizona, California, New Mexico, and Texas, where the 13 most feared gunslingers of the 19th and early 20th centuries roamed. These were no ordinary men, they were outlaws, wanted dead or alive by the relentless pursuit of justice. Their language was the gunshot that echoed from their revolvers, and their only truth was found in the pull of the trigger. Get ready to meet the 13 most formidable gunslingers of the Wild West, characters you wouldn't want to encounter even in your worst nightmares, for their fate was sealed, their ultimate demise was death. But before we delve deeper, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with our thrilling updates. Now, let's begin. Number 1, Jesse James. The first on our list of outlaws is a man who ruled the state of Missouri with his own law from 1860 to 1882. Jesse James, along with his brother Frank, is believed to have robbed more than 20 trains and banks, accumulating an impressive fortune of $200,000. While he saw himself as a modern-day Robin Hood, there is no evidence that he shared his wealth with the poor. Jesse James was audacious, planning and robbing banks in broad daylight, stopping the most powerful machines of the era to plunder their treasures successfully. But his reign came to a premature end at the age of 33 in 1882 when he received a fatal shot to the back of his head from one of his accomplices, Robert Ford. Just a year prior, tired of being mocked by the handsome outlaw, the governor of the state had offered a hefty reward of $10,000 for his capture and that of his brother. Since then, Jesse James only robs the sleep of filmmakers who seek to preserve his intriguing yet despicable legacy on the silver screen. Number 2, Billy the Kid. One of the most notorious names in Wild West banditry, Billy the Kid's reputation precedes him. With a record of 21 kills in his 21 years of life, we present to you the cattle rustler, gunslinger, killer, and escape artist, Henry McCarthy, better known as Billy the Kid. Although the exact number of deaths attributed to him remains disputed, it takes a ruthless and daring individual to kill even nine men. Born in New York, Billy's life took an unfortunate turn as he journeyed on horseback across Indiana, Kansas, and Denver before his family settled in Santa Fe, New Mexico. While nothing justifies his actions, life had dealt him a harsh hand. His mother died of tuberculosis when he was just a teenager, and after being separated from his brother, he ended up in foster care. His criminal career began in 1875, at the tender age of 16 when he joined various gangs, quickly turning his nickname into a synonym for terror. By 1880, his name was in the headlines of sensationalist newspapers in Lincoln County. But with fame came his greatest problem. On July 14, 1881, after a $500 reward was offered for his head, Billy the Kid fell under the iron fist of New Mexico's sheriff, Pat Garrett, who gunned him down. Number 3, Velez? There was a woman who sneaked into our list. But she wasn't just any woman. Although she didn't wear pants, she was as ruthless as any scoundrel with a wide-brimmed hat and a beard. Her name was Myra May Del Sur. However, everyone in the 1880s knew her better as the Queen of Outlaws. She couldn't make worse life choices. It's as if there were no other men around, she married three outlaws, each one worse than the previous. Bruce Younger, Chimerai, and their gang. Needless to say, she didn't learn to knit. Her figure was a mix of respect and aversion. While she flaunted gold earrings that radiated admiration, she also carried one or two pistols on her waist. After several arrests for robbery and a life exposed to public scorn, on February 3, 1889, just before turning 41, she was murdered near her cabin in Oklahoma. Her death was overshadowed by suspicions. It is believed that her own son, Rido, might have had something to do with her assassination. The New York Times called her the most desperate woman ever to grace the borders. 
Number 4, Butch Cassidy. Few outlaws in history accumulated as much money from crime as Butch Cassidy did. According to records of his robberies, he had at least $100,000 in loot. Life often invites crime when you're poor and have 13 siblings, and that's exactly what happened to this gunslinger from Kazar. His first robbery was no small feat. Alongside other men, he forcefully took $20,000 from a bank using his revolver. With that money, he could have started a lawful and honest life. But after spending more than a year in prison for horse theft in 1894, Cassidy returned to what he knew best. He added two more robberies to his record, amassing tens of thousands of dollars. With the law on his heels, he sought refuge in Argentina before returning to the US, where he allegedly died in 1908 at the age of 42. However, there are other versions of his death. One suggests that his body was found with a gunshot wound to the temple in the distant town of San Vicente in Bolivia. Another version claims that far from feeling the heat of South American lead, he escaped to Mexico with his accomplice, Sundance, from where he allegedly returned to the United States and lived for many more years. Number 5, John Wesley Harding. Being the son of a Methodist preacher didn't count for anything when it came to this next gunslinger on our list. He was wicked by nature, an incorrigible who displayed his violent character even as a child. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the notorious John Wesley Harding. He inaugurated his criminal record as a mere schoolboy when he stabbed a classmate and killing a black man when he had barely grown a hint of a beard on his cheeks. Throughout his 42 years of life, he killed many more men, including soldiers who tried to apprehend him. This killer even became a schoolteacher in Navarro County, where he also worked as a cowboy and poker player. But with dynamite coursing through his veins, he continued to commit murders, killing another player and more than a dozen other victims. Eventually, Wesley Harding surrendered in 1872, but he didn't stay in his newfound residence for long. The Texas Rangers captured him in Florida, and he was sentenced to 25 years in prison for the murder of a deputy sheriff. However, he never served his full sentence. He became a gunslinger, a schoolteacher, and towards the end of his days. Number 6, William Bill Doolan, a twisted life and tragic death. William Bill Doolan, an American outlaw, led the notorious gang known as the Blind Owl Gang operating in Indian Territory. Their criminal activities included bank and train robberies, as well as despicable acts like the murder of law enforcement officers. At the age of 21, Doolan ventured west and found work on Oscar's ranch in Oklahoma. Oscar, a farmer, took him in and taught him to read and do arithmetic. However, these newfound skills were not enough to keep Doolan away from the lure of a life of crime. By the late 19th century, Doolan, now known as a meticulous planner, began robbing banks and trains with impeccable methodology that allowed him to commit crimes without being caught or causing severe injuries. Though the exact amount of his ill-gotten fortune is unknown, some reports from that era suggest it could have been around $165,000 amassed over five years of his criminal career. Unfortunately, on a fateful day, August 25, 1896, Doolan was riddled with bullets by law enforcement agents in Lawton, Oklahoma. With his death, it was once again proven that crime doesn't always pay. Number 7, Sam Bass, the iconic train robber. Sam Bass forged his legend by stealing $65,000 in gold coins, $1,300 in cash, and four gold watches from a Union Pacific train. Quite an impressive feat that solidified his name among the most famous outlaws of the Wild West. Hailing from Michelin, Texas, Bass used his skills to impose his own law. At the age of 18, he headed to Texas, where he quickly turned to robbing stagecoaches alongside his partner, John Collins. 
By the spring of 1878, Bass and his gang had already pulled off four train robberies on the outskirts of Dallas, establishing his reputation as a feared gunslinger. However, his legend would not grow much further. Bass gang was infiltrated by a Texas Ranger informant, leading to the betrayal of their master plan to rob the Williamson County Bank. When the gang was asked to surrender, they responded with a hail of bullets. The place turned into a hellfire of bullets as they attempted to escape. Bass was wounded in the spine, and the next day, he was found about three miles north of the Texan city of Round Rock. He was taken into custody but succumbed to his injuries a few hours later on July 21, 1878. Number 8, James the Undertaker Milner, the Merciless Killer. No man seemed to enjoy killing more than James the Undertaker Milner, who relished having his victims at his mercy, showing them no mercy whatsoever. Undoubtedly, one of the most feared gunslingers of the Wild West. Legend has it that his path to hell began when he was still a child of God. It is said that at the tender age of eight, he killed his grandparents, although the veracity of this claim remains unconfirmed. His long list of deadly victims is said to number between 20 and 50 people, each one buried six feet underground in the great state of Texas. Milner was a professional hitman and psychopath, known to have said that he would kill anyone for a price ranging from $150 to $2,000 per head. He relied on his trusty shotgun to carry out his gruesome acts, lurking in the darkness of the night to ambush his victims. When he wasn't killing, he could be found attending church or reading the Bible. He never drank, spoke ill, or gave any indication of his true nature. However, just as one who lives by the sword dies by the sword, the final moments of James Milner were more agonizing than those of his victims. He was lynched in 1909 in the town of Adra, Oklahoma by an enraged mob seeking vengeance for the murder of a former U.S. Deputy Marshal. Number 9, Felipe Espinoza, The Avenger. Family matters are simultaneously a matter of blood, and the Espinoza brothers took this to heart. Felipe, along with his brother Jose, led a gang formed with their cousins that would soon become known throughout the West as the Bloody Espinozas. Hailing from the Mexican city of Veracruz, the Espinoza brothers witnessed the deaths of six family members in a bombardment by the U.S. Navy during the Mexican-American War. From that point on, every murder they committed was a personal vendetta. According to local legend, Felipe Espinoza had a vision of the Virgin Mary, who allegedly told him to kill 100 Anglos for each family member lost during the war between Mexico and the United States. Felipe killed so many people that he is often considered the first serial killer in the U.S. It is believed that the gang murdered no fewer than 32 individuals, including American soldiers, a crime as grave then as it is today. However, to his misfortune, it was a member of his own family who would betray him. That man was a cousin named Tonto Vive who not only deceived Felipe but also made him drink until he passed out, then slit his throat and beheaded him in 1863. Number 10, Dallas Bad Temper Meyer, the Ruthless Gunslinger. Dallas Bad Temper Meyer was known for his volatile nature and fierce personality. Born in Polo County, Alabama, on December 11, 1845, Meyer's life took a turbulent turn at the age of 15 when he unsuccessfully tried to join the Confederate Army to fight in the Civil War. He was expelled when his true age was discovered. However, years later, he enlisted again and served in various capacities, often sustaining injuries. While in Texas working as a lawman, Meyer killed three men before the end of his third day in the field. But these would not be his only victims. Soon after, Maya claimed the lives of six more gentlemen, earning a reputation as one of the most feared enforcers in the state. After a life of violence, Maya was shot from behind by a man named James Mann, leaving him lifeless at the scene. Today, his grave can be visited at the Alistar. 
Cemetery in Colorado County, Colorado. Number 11, Tomko Jr. Hewitt, the traumatized outlaw. Another gunslinger whose childhood experiences seemed to have a lasting impact was Tomko Jr. Hewitt. Born on November 21, 1860, in Missouri, Jr., the youngest of the Hewitt family, was an explorer and interpreter during the Apache Wars. He was even present during the surrender of Geronimo. However, tragedy struck early in his life when his father abused him as a young boy, prompting him to leave home at the tender age of 16. In 1901, Junior became entangled in a dispute between the Miller and Mikkel families in Iron Mountain, Wyoming. 14-year-old Will Mikkel was found dead a month later, and suspicion fell on Junior. The drunken boasts of a man named Hung Sober about the murder of Young were led to his arrest and conviction in 1903. Just one day before his 43rd birthday, Junior was hanged for murder. He was buried in the Columbia Boulder Cemetery. Number 12, John Kingfisher Fisher, The Betrayer John Kingfisher Fisher began breaking the law at the age of 16 by stealing horses, which soon led him in and out of various Texas prisons. He made a significant leap in his criminal career in 1870 when he joined a gang of outlaws raiding ranches in Mexico. However, his volatile character and ambition led him to kill three of his allies, assuming leadership of the gang. Fisher and his friend Van Thompson attended a play at the San Antonio Opera House. After the show, they went to the Power and Variety Fire Saloon to meet with the owner, Joe Foster. However, they walked into an ambush. Thompson was shot in the head and died instantly, while Fisher was gunned down by multiple bullets. In one hand, he tightly gripped his revolver, and in the other, the handshake he would never give. Number 32, Doc Holliday, the Gambler Dentist. John Henry Doc Holliday gained fame in the Wild West for his friendship with Wyatt Earp and his skills as a gambler and gunfighter. But what many do not know is that he graduated from dental school and had a dental practice in Atlanta, Georgia. His association with Earp embroiled him in the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral, where several men died and others were injured, including himself. When Wyatt Earp's brother, Morgan, was assassinated, a feud erupted between Wyatt and Morgan's killers. For years, Holiday stood by Wyatt's side, seeking vengeance. During this time, numerous murders took place. Eventually, Holiday succumbed to tuberculosis in a hotel in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. By then, he had distanced himself from Wyatt Earp due to his failing health. He died on November 8, 1887. For those gunslingers, thieves, and murderers, fortune could not save them from the bullets that would end their lives. Yet, they were what they were in a period of history when the fire spewing from a revolver spoke with more authority than words. Nowadays, there are different kinds of gunslingers, but none who garner as much admiration as those who rode the American West in the 1800s and 1900s, with their hats, boots, bandanas, and buffalo hide belts. We hope this video has been informative. If you have anything to add, please share it with us in the comments section. Don't forget to like this video and share the link with your family and friends to enlighten them about the 13 most feared gunslingers of the Wild West. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. Also, follow us on all our social media platforms, listed in the description below. We'll be back soon with more curiosities from history.